Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and today I'm going to be looking at Intel's crazy new Nook or next unit of computing, the Nook 9 Extreme, which is the first Nook to use a discrete graphics card for better gaming performance and why I think it's absolutely awesome for a small form factor PC. First, a big thank you to U2Key.com for sponsoring today's Crazy Tech Lab video. It offers a whole bunch of software at crazy low prices, and you can get things even cheaper by using the code CAT24 to get 24% off Windows 10 Pro. You can also use CAT24 to get 24% off Office 2019 Pro. Meanwhile, CAT15 will get you 15% off Windows 10 Home. You can also use CAT15 on Office 2016 Pro as well. Finally, you can use the code CAT10 to get 10% off all the other software on its website. So once again, thank you to U2Key.com for sponsoring today's video and head over to its website for great low prices on your software. The Nook has traditionally been super small and could practically fit into the palm of your hand, but the Nook 9 Extreme is considerably larger. However, even compared to the smallest Mini ITX cases, it's still tiny, measuring less than 10cm wide, just 24cm long and less than 22cm tall. The chassis is well made and attractive, if a little bland, and currently supports up to an RTX 2070 graphics card due to space constraints, which we'll talk about in a minute. The new Nook supports a range of new processors, with the flagship model being Intel's Core i9-9980HK, which sports 8 cores and 16 threads with a boost frequency of up to 5GHz. Two small fans sit in the roof of the case to boost cooling by expelling warm air through a large vent. Meanwhile, round the rear of the chassis, the graphics card also expels warm air through the usual vents in the PCI slot. The PSU also has a small exhaust fan here too. The rear of the case offers a large number of ports, including two Intel Gigabit Ethernet ports, four USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, and two Type-C Thunderbolt 3 ports too. The video outputs vary depending on which graphics card you use, but my sample was equipped with a DisplayPort, HDMI port, and a DVI port. The power supply is a 500 watt unit, which is more than enough to deal with the included hardware, even if you apply some modest overclocks, and remained reasonably quiet under load too. The two fans in the roof are actually powered by a contact connector so you can remove them and the roof section without having to worry about power cables. I really, really like this feature, but admittedly it's things like this that will have added to the sky-high price tag. As you can see, Intel has crammed a whole lot of hardware inside the Nook 9 Extreme, but a lot of it is upgradable once you've dismantled the chassis. The mesh side panels act as dust filters and simply slide off to reveal the hardware inside. The graphics card sits in a standard PCI Express slot and standard 8 and 6 pin power cables are provided to power a range of models too. While there's a lot of proprietary hardware inside the Nook 9 Extreme, a lot of it is familiar and upgradable, but the party piece of the new Nook is what Intel calls the Element, essentially a self-sufficient blade or system on a card. This has its own radial cooling system and is where the CPU, two of the three M.2 ports and pair of sodium memory slots are located. 
Performance wise, the Core i9-9980HK managed a Cinebench score of 3629, which is roughly equivalent to Intel's Core i5-10600K or AMD's Ryzen 5 3600X, but a fair way off matching the performance of the desktop Core i9-9900K, even if the single threaded performance was actually similar. In games, it managed a minimum frame rate of 92 frames per second in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, falling to 66 frames per second at 1440p, so plenty fast enough here. In Metro Exodus, the minimum sat at 31 frames per second at 1080p, with the average sitting at 60 frames per second, falling to 27 frames per second minimum and 49 frames per second average at 1440p. The peak power sat at 281 watts and fell to a super low 36 watts at idle. The GPU temperature peaked at 66 degrees C, which is great, but this CPU regularly topped 80 degrees C, so there's not a whole lot of room here for overclocking. The Nook 9 Extreme isn't the only implementation of Intel's new element design, and there are several other PCs from the likes of Razer and others trying to tap into a resurgent mini gaming and content creation PC market, mainly dominated by mini ITX PCs, but with some successful entries too, such as Corsair's mini ITX based one tower PCs. The main problem for the Nook 9 Extreme though is that while much of the core hardware is upgradable, most notably the graphics card, kitting out top spec with a 1TB PCI Express SSD, 16GB of RAM, a fairly typical PC then, will see the Nook 9 Extreme set you back well over £2,000, while the bare bones kit alone costs over $1,600 in the US, minus any graphics card, storage or memory options. You can definitely build a more powerful Mini ITX PC for less, however you can't argue with the supremely low volume of Intel's design, which is dwarfed even by small cases such as the Dan Case's A4 SFX. For anyone that's severely space limited or just loves the engineering going on here, I can thoroughly recommend it. It's powerful, it's quiet and it's very well made. But for the rest of us with limited wallet sizes, a larger mini ITX PC is definitely the way to go because you just get more for your money. I'd like to thank Intel for sending me the sample of its Nook 9 Extreme and you can buy it using the links in the description below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.